with the recent announcement of the new WebPresenter 4K, Blackmagic really made it difficult to find which streaming encoder is best for you. Is it the ATEM Mini series with built-in streaming encoder? Or alternatively, do you want to have something more dedicated, like for example, the WebPresenter 4K or HD? Well, that's what we're gonna try to figure out today and compare these two devices to figure out which streaming encoder is best for you. And if you like this kind of content, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel so that you get notified for future content. And also, if you subscribe to this channel, you also help us to make this community even better. But coming back to future content, I am so stoked to inform you already that I am busy to create an in-depth video on the new WebPresenter HD and 4K, talking about the companion app, the device, back and front, all the buttons and whistles, and also a full-on menu walkthrough. So a lot that will come to you very, very soon. Next to that, of course, I want to talk to you about what we're going to do today to figure out what is the best streaming encoder for you. First and foremost, I am going to give you some uh, help to figure that out for yourself. I am not going to tell you that whatever I say is best for you. You really need to decide for yourself, but I hope that you will get more informed decision for this. All right, so let's talk about the ATEM Mini first. We're going to configure the ATEM Mini to stream to the internet. The ATEM Mini can stream without any need of a computer, but you still need to yeah, configure it before you can do that. Important side note is that not all of the ATEM Minis do have a streaming encoder built in. The original ATEM Mini does not have a streaming encoder built in. All the other ones, so the ATEM Mini Pro, Pro ISO, Extreme, and Extreme ISO do have that built in. So what are the steps that we are going to do together in the demo? Well, first and foremost, we're going to go into YouTube in this case and fetch a streaming key that will allow you to stream on that platform. Next to that, we're going to uh, put that into the ATEM software control and so that the ATEM knows where to stream to. Then I will do a quick side note and show you where you can set the resolution if you want to. And then next to that, we're going to set the quality and then we're going to save it and we're ready to go. What we're not going to show you, however, I'm going to tell you right now is that at the very end, you can save the configuration on your ATEM Mini. And the only thing that you need to do to uh, go live is to press this on air button right there. So th that is also possible, though it's not uh, during this video. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and show you that video. All right, let's go. The first step, regardless if you have a web presenter or a ATEM Mini with an encoder, is that you need to have a stream key. Now, I am going to show that within YouTube because I happen to have YouTube. So I am logged on to my channel and I hit create and then I hit go live. Once I hit go live, I will be automatically brought to YouTube studio. And this is where I can fill in my title, my description and also my privacy mode. I already did that up front, so that's the reason why it states demo and private here. Um, but I am interested in the stream key. If I click here on copy, it will automatically uh, copy the stream key to the dashboard. And that means that I can go either to the uh, web presenter setup utility or to the ATEM software control. That's exactly what I'm going to do right here. I am in the ATEM software control and i am going to go to the output tab if i click on that you'll see here live stream and of course i'm streaming to youtube hence i'm going to change that to uh, youtube and i'm going to hit the key right here next to that i have to set a quality default is streaming high but you can see that we have six different uh, qualities and these are all corresponding with a bitrate and on the left hand side you see which one that that is. Now, it's important to note that you need to take the one that is possible in your particular situation. For me, that's either the streaming high or hyperdeck low. I'm gonna stick with the default streaming high. 
Now this is the quality, but you can also, if you really want to, change the resolution of your uh, stream. Um, that is via uh, the setup utility right here. And then you'll see that it's an auto mode and that brings it to 1080p 50 for me because that is what my camera is set to but i can change it to whatever i'd like as long as it's 1080p and one of these that you can see right here i'm going to leave it to auto right there now next to that i can also add uh, my phone as a fallback scenario so i'm using my ethernet connection at, at home in my studio but for the sake of uh you know, if something goes wrong, I want to have the possibility to also use my phone as a fallback scenario. And this is what I've done right now on the right hand side. You see right here that the phone is also connected, which is great. Now, how did I do that? I, uh, you can actually set how uh, the ATEM acts in the setup utility of your ATEM. You go, go to configure, then you say network settings, and then here you see connection priority ethernet before mobile but you can also say mobile before ethernet i am going to stick with ethernet before mobile i'm going to save it and that is the way that it's uh, gonna work for me now i'm going to say on air and i'm going to stream directly to youtube and you can see that right here there you go and before you know it you're live which is fantastic now i can't imagine that during the demo you saw a lot of uh, different uh, digits like for example the video standard or the uh, the bit rate the quality and also that auto mode maybe it's good to just very quickly explain to you what the auto mode is so on the left hand side you see that based on camera one and that's very important to note camera one sets the whole project so if camera one is set to 1080p 50 then that means that if you have auto enabled your program out your usb-c out and your streaming out will all be in 1080p 50. if you do not like that uh resolution then you can change it within the atem software center and you can just change it to e one of these that are listed on the right hand side you can also set the quality either on hyperdeck quality or on streaming quality but what is important to note that in both cases you cannot change anything on the atem mini or in the software once you go live so that is a bit something that you need to take to take into account. And the reason why I'm saying that is that in some cases, you might want to change it to a lower bit rate because of some congestion that you didn't expect. Anyway, talking about pros and cons, I have made a list for you based on the A10 Mini and A10 Mini Extreme. Let's talk about the pros first. One device for switching and streaming, which is really great because that means that you can, um, you know, you don't have to bring in a lot of stuff. You can just have a back backpack with a camera and maybe a laptop and the, the, the device and you can go live, which is fantastic. Another pro would be the ability to show a still or a different camera if needed. What I mean by that is that sometimes things go wrong and you want to show like, oh, sorry, something goes wrong. We need to uh, do some 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 work behind the scenes or uh, thank you very much for uh, very much for watching or that kind of stuff that is possible on the ATEM mini next to that it's also possible to tether your iphone or your android device which can be also a fallback scenario in case your your ethernet dies on you and you can still go live which is great Next to that, it's also possible to stream to the streaming bridge of Blackmagic, which is a, a device that they've created specifically for that. So these are just a few cons, which are really, really cool. Unfortunately, there are also some cons to the ATA Mini Pro and Extreme series. The first one is that it can only stream in 1080p. And so that's equal to what you, what you set on it, auto or something else. Next to that, you cannot put animated graphics. You do need to have additional equipment to do that. The streaming quality can't be changed while streaming. And last but not least, the streaming quality can be influence also your USB ISO recording on the 
pro iso and extreme iso or your program recording on all four of them which is a bit of a bummer all right so that is the atem mini tell me what you think about the atem mini in the comments below so that i know what you think and maybe a future video that i need to create let's talk about the web presenter how to configure the web presenter of course also now i want to do roughly the same thing and basically we're using the same formats that we did previously the only difference is that it's not the atem software center but the web presenter app that we're using to, to configure the web presenter so that's the difference and let's go ahead and go into that video and check it out continuing with the web presenter i actually already uh, fetched a streaming key from youtube uh, so i don't have to do that again and i already started the web presenter setup application on my computer now let's configure the stream and this is where you can also set the video output. Now, unlike on the ATEM Mini, I can actually also select 720. So I can also downscale if I would like to, uh, but I will set it on auto mode, which is in my case, 1080p50, as we have seen during the ATEM demonstration. Um, if I would have a web presenter 4K, then this list would be longer. It would also include the 2160p versions, which is really awesome. So, uh, but unfortunately, I only own a web presenter HD. Now, I can also set the live stream here. So let's go ahead and select YouTube, enter the key, and I, you here see the quality. And these are the same uh, setups that you will have on the ATEM Mini. So let me just show them again. These are the bit rates that are available at your disposal for your quality. If I would have a web presenter 4K and I would have selected a 4K streaming option right here, then these would be the bit rates. And as you can see, they're quite a lot more than for HD. So make sure that your network can handle that bit rate. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and just click on air to stream to YouTube. So that was the web presenter setup app. Now you can also change a lot of configuration on the device itself. It has a screen right there. On the screen, there's a menu, and on this menu, I can, for example, change the video standard. So here you have a picture of me changing the video standard, but you can also change the quality or the bitrate of the video as well. And this is a the picture of me changing that as well, which is fantastic that that feature is available on the device itself. Now, like I did on the ATEM, before I'm gonna go into the pros and cons, I wanna talk to you a little bit about a summary of maybe something that needs a little bit more explanation. So here we go. On the left-hand side, you see that the input via SDI can be a camera that can be HD or 4K, and that can be cross-converted for your stream to either 720 or 1080 on an HD model, and yes, also a 4K video can be changed to a 1080 on an HD model. Then for the 4K model, you can stream 720, 1080, and solely for the 4K model, you can also stream to 4K, which is 2160p. On the right hand side, you see the standards that the web presenter has quite a lot for the HD model. And below that, you see the 4K version, which again has a lot of different ones as, as well. And below that, you see the same streaming uh, setup that you have for the quality at least, than you have on the ATEM Mini, but uh, the bitrate can be changed while the system is on air. So that is really great. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of the web presenter HD. So the first pro is that it streams to 720, 1080, and 4K that we already talked about. We also talked about the next one, which is the streaming quality can be changed while streaming. And we also talked about the cross converter already. We didn't really talk about the phone tethering. Yes, that is possible on the web presenter as well. You actually have two USB-C ports, one in the front and one in the back, which is really cool that that's possible. Next to that, you, it can be the sole device connected to the internet, 
why is that so important? Well, I I work in IT business, so you can imagine that I am very much aware of security. Now, your ATAM or Hyperdeck, <laughs> Blackmagic just uses FTP, and FTP is not really secure. That's the reason why I every everything that all all the gear that I have is basically in an internet bubble, and only one device is actually connected to the internet just to make sure that nothing happens and I don't want to get into problems. Next to that, you can stream with the web presenter also to the streaming bridge by Blackmagic. And it also has a professional monitor for your streams. And you can actually see it right there. It's actually running. You see the bit rate right there and you see the cache and a lot of other stuff, which I will, of course, talk to you about during the video that I promised you at the start of the show. So again, I cannot say that enough. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notified for future content. And let's go ahead and go into the cons. The web presenter for HD and 4K does not have USB-C recording. It also does not have the ability to quickly load a still in case of issues. Yes, it's another piece of <laughs> of equipment that you have to bring along, and it's an SDI workflow. So yes, you do need to have a converter from HDMI to SDI, unfortunately. All right, so before I leave, I want to talk to you about some use cases. So we're talking about the use cases that I thought about when I was uh, preparing for this video. The first one is, of course, with the, uh, with the Ata Mini Pro or Extreme. It is the perfect and simple stream setup for just cameras, a laptop, like for example, for webinars or streams. Also, it's fantastic, fantastic for either your Zoom or your Teams or Skype calls to bring that to the next level to be even more professional uh, quality for uh, during your work. Also, it can be uh, used for outgoing stream for live concerts for to avoid, for example, commercial music to streams. That's definitely another video that we need to talk about. Commercial music and streams do not go well together. I have a solution for you, but let's talk about that later. But what I typically do is that I indeed have a separate ATEM just to give the outside world a little bit of a different show than internally on the screens uh, besides the, uh, the, the stage. So that is the ATEM Mini. Pro, uh, the, the use cases. Next to that, we've got the use cases for the web presenter, HD and 4K, whilst the perfect streaming encoder for bigger productions, definitely. Also, uh, still streams with uh, low internet bandwidth, so you can change either the, the resolution to 720 or the quality can be changed. And last but not least, uh, yeah, like the Ata Mini, actually, you can use it as the sole internet device that was what I had in store for you today. I hope that you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.